Welcome back, dear viewers, to another episode in this series, Live Your Life on Purpose. In keeping with this theme, Live Your Life on Purpose, last time we discussed one of the most prominent, distinguishing features of the true Muslim, which is his love for his brothers in faith. This love, often referred to as loving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is something that helps each one of us find and taste the sweetness of faith. For the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ثَلَاثٌ مَنْ كُنَّ فِيهِ he said there are three things that whoever attains them shall taste the sweetness of faith. And the first thing he mentioned in this hadith, man kana yuhibbul mar'a la yuhibbuhu illa lillah. He said, and the first one to have this sweetness of faith, the first description mentioned is the one who loves another person, but he does not love him except for the purpose of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning he loves him solely and exclusively for Allah azza wa jal. My dear brothers and sisters, there are so many ahadith that describe the status of two people who love one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so many hadith that describe the high position in paradise that Allah Azza wa Jal has promised them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا يدخلون الجنة حتى تؤمنوا ولا تؤمنوا حتى تحابوا أولا أدلكم على شيء إذا فعلتموه the Prophet ﷺ said, None of you will enter paradise until you believe. This statement by itself is not surprising. We should know that our entry into paradise is conditional upon our belief. So no surprises there. But listen to what he then said next. He said, and none of you believe until you love one another. None of you believe until you love one another. So our belief has the condition that we love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said, shall I not inform you of something that if you do it, you will love one another and your love will increase. He said, spread the salams. Afshu salama bainakum. Spread the salams amongst yourselves. Look at this high status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put on the love between the believers. Loving for his sake alone. My dear brothers and sisters, after talking about the importance of loving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the reward for those who do this, we must also discuss how is it that we as Muslims are supposed to treat one another? How is it that we as Muslims can increase this brotherhood that we have for one another and this love that we have for one another? And one of the many beautiful things in Al-Islam 
is that this is not a deen, a faith tradition that is practiced only on Sundays or Saturdays or some day of the week. Rather, Islam is a way of life. And we have authenticated teachings for practically everything that we will encounter in this dunya. The Prophet wasallam even gave a comprehensive statement legislating how we are to treat one another. He said the following, لا تحاسدوا ولا تناجشوا ولا تباغضوا ولا تدابروا ولا يبع بعضكم على بيع بعض وكونوا عباد الله إخوانا المسلم أخ المسلم لا يظلمه ولا يخذله ولا يكذبه ولا يحفره التقوى ها هنا ويشير إلى صدره ثلاث مرات بحسب امرئ من الشر أن يحقر أخاه المسلم كل المسلم على المسلم حرام دمه وماله وعرضه This is a long hadith, brothers and sisters, but profound and comprehensive, detailing the full set of treatments and the dealings that we will have with one another and how we should treat one another. He started by saying, do not feel envy against one another. Don't have this envy, this envy and jealousy in your heart towards one another. Do not outbid one another. Think of how often we engage in these practices. He said, do not outbid one another. Do not bear aversion against one another. And do not bear enmity against one another. Don't have these negative feelings in your heart against your brother Muslims. One of you should not enter into a transaction when your brother has already entered into this transaction. And just think about being in the market. Some people, depending on where you're from, may not have this opportunity. But many Muslim countries in the market, the fighting over the prices, maybe there's one item left. I'll give you this much, and I'll give you this much. He's already paying handing the money over. No, no, I'll give a little more. Subhanallah. Do not enter into the transaction when your brother has already entered into the transaction. And be fellow Muslims and servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It says, a Muslim is a Muslim's brother. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Verily, the believers are brothers. This is now mirrored in this hadith. Al-Muslimu akhul Muslim, he said. The Muslim is the Muslim's brother. Listen to what comes next, my dear brothers and sisters. He said, he does not wrong him. You don't wrong your Muslim brother. He does not forsake him. He does not lie to him. We've discussed the characteristic of lying and truthfulness. The characteristic of lying which is not possible to be found in the believer, the Prophet So you will not lie to your brother and he will not despise his brother. And then the Prophet he pointed to his chest three times and he said, piety. Taqwa is found here. And he said, despising his Muslim brother is enough sinfulness for any man to do. And the hadith ended by him saying, every Muslim's blood, property, and honor are unlawful to be violated by another Muslim. Subhanallah. This hadith covers it. And think, my dear brothers and sisters, 
How often have we gone against and do we continue to go against what we just narrated in this hadith? Have you wronged your brother or sister in Islam? Do you despise any of your brothers or sisters in Islam? Reflect upon your actions, my dear brothers and sisters. Make tawbah, make a sincere repentance, and insha'Allah ta'ala, make the situation right. Stay tuned, we'll take a short break, and come back insha'Allah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Analyze your mistakes. Have you ever tried to overcome your anger? Realize your weakness. Do you find it difficult to control your tongue? Diagnose your moral sickness. Have you ever felt that your intentions are corrupt? Learn the steps essential to nourish our souls in purification of the soul every Thursday at 11.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12.30 p.m. UK on Peace TV. Thursdays provide. In Britain, we are facing one big problem that are you Muslim or British? The space to talk. In India, back home, they ask, are you a Muslim first or Indian first? And we Muslims should know how to reply, how to turn the tables over. The place to knock. Why Trinity cannot be regarded in that sense, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The opportunity to ask. But even if we agree that what the Christians say, that he was crucified, so if Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, died for three days, who controlled the world? That means even God died? The freedom to unmask. So there are various ways which we can prove the argument to be wrong. Let's meet Dr. Zakir every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers. Before the break, we narrated a comprehensive and famous hadith wherein the manner by which we should deal with our brothers and sisters in Islam was very clearly described. Now, along with advising on how to increase your brotherhood, and how we need to deal with one another and treat one another, the Prophet ﷺ also warned us of the things that work to destroy this very precious brotherhood that we are trying to actually strengthen. Examples include many things that you're aware of, unnecessary talking about one another, backbiting one another, and giving false assumptions and bad assumptions to one another. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا يدخل الجنة قتات. The backbiter will not enter paradise. This should be scary for us, my dear brothers and sisters. We should be concerned when we hear that. Unfortunately, most of us are not concerned and you're thinking, why would I be concerned? I'm not backbiting. But is that true? People think they're not backbiting because of their misunderstanding of what backbiting is. And inshallah ta'ala, in the next episode, we will give the exact hadith defining backbiting. But for now, let us suffice it to say that if we want to understand backbiting, we cannot go to Merriam-Webster Dictionary or an online dictionary and search for the word backbiting and then come to our understanding. Rather, we need to get the definition as presented in the Qur'an and in the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wherein we read that saying anything about your brother or sister behind their back that they do not like, this is backbiting. Now, what is the famous response that we've heard and likely that some of you are making right now if you're listening? You're going to say, yeah, but what I said is true. And we'll talk about this next time, inshallah. 
The Prophet Sallallahu said, if what you have said about your brother or sister is not true, then it's actually slandering, which is worse. But if it is true, then it is backbiting. Even if it's true, and your brother does not want you to say it, you have just backbitten your brother. So my dear brothers and sisters, it does not matter if it is not true. You are backbiting, and based on this hadith, you were just now denied entry into paradise. What else? What about these suspicions and bad assumptions that we often give to our brothers and sisters? Where we assume the worst of your brother. We assume that they did that or that they did this. And we come up with some convoluted story in our mind to justify our assumptions of what may or may not have happened. What is said about this? The Prophet ﷺ said, He said, I caution you about and I warn you about suspicion. Avoid suspicion, for suspicion is the worst and most false form of talk. So my dear brothers and sisters, we need to realize that our actions, both positive actions and negative actions, they affect those around us and they affect the brotherhood that we are trying to establish. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he frequently would repeat these teachings to his companions, hoping to sow seeds of love in their hearts and nurture it until it would bear fruits of this great love that Islam wants for the Muslims. And with this strong love and brotherhood between the Muslims, the Prophet ﷺ was able to establish the most ideal society of believers ever known, whose solidarity was described so well in the following two hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي تَوَادِّهِمْ وَتَرَاحُمِهِمْ وَتَوَاصُلِهِمْ كَمَثَلِ الْجَسَدِ الْوَاحِدِ إِذَا اشْتَكَى مِنْهُ عُضْوٌ he said that the likeness or the parable of the believers in relation to their kindness, their mercy, and the compassion that they have for one another is like that of the body. When an organ of the body falls ill, what happens? The rest of the body will respond with fever and sleeplessness. And also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Mu'minu lil-Mu'min kal-bunyan yashuddu ba'duhu ba'da. He said, the believer towards another believer is like a building whose different parts support one another. SubhanAllah. My dear brothers and sisters, we can see how Muslims affect one another. So we need to check our actions and we need to make sure that we are not being an assistant to the shaitan in trying to destroy this brotherhood. And no doubt there will be differences between us. We will not always mesh together. There will be different personalities and opinions. This is natural. Arguments can even occur. Tempers can flare. But let this not break us apart, brothers and sisters, and cause disunity. When problems arise and when conflict inevitably happens between the brothers and sisters, we have to implement the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكَمْ So make reconciliation between your brothers. Try to bring them back to one another. Try to join their hearts to one another. You see two people who are arguing and bickering and between their hearts is a barrier. Try to remove that barrier. 
implement this verse and try to bring them back and soften their hearts, inshallah ta'ala. And lastly, my dear brothers and sisters, it's important to mention the ayat and the ahadith about brotherhood in Islam. At the same time, it is always important to remember what truly makes us brothers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً Verily, the believers are brothers. Our brotherhood is based off of our belief. There is a direct correlation between belief and between brotherhood. As Allah says, the believers are brothers. And as we know, the stronger our iman, the stronger our belief, the stronger our brotherhood. And the weaker our iman, the weaker our belief, the weaker our brotherhood. And as we know that iman can increase and iman can decrease based off of the performance of good deeds or otherwise, we can then say clearly that the more good deeds we have, the more our belief will increase and the more our brotherhood will increase. And the more that we enjoin in bad deeds, our iman will go down and our brotherhood will decrease. Therefore, we can see clearly, my dear brothers and sisters, that in order to have true brotherhood and to increase the brotherhood amongst us, we must cling firmly to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where he says in the Quran, And hold fast, all of you, to this rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and do not be divided. You want to increase your brotherhood and your sisterhood? Do your part. Hold firmly to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Grab onto and hold firmly to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what unites us, my dear brothers and sisters. In continuing the verse mentioned previously, Allah then says, وَذْكُرُوا نِعَمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا Allah says, and remember the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. For you were enemies one to another. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he put and made unity between your hearts so that by his grace, you became brothers. My dear brothers and sisters, this channel is broadcast around the world. You have people listening from the Middle East, from far Asia, from Central Asia, from America, Australia. Clearly, we could have been enemies one to another, but in fact, we're not. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this unity between our hearts. And by his grace, he said, we became brethren. Next time you visit your local masjid or community centers, brothers and sisters, I leave you with one small request. Find someone you have not spoken to before. Introduce yourself. Give salams. Spend just a few minutes to try to get to know this person. Let us make apparent in our actions the feelings and the beliefs that should be ingrained in our hearts, that we could have been enemies one to another, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He joined our hearts together by Islam and He made us brothers. Until next time, fi amanillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. He created the universe, to Him belong the heavens and the earth. 